Hello guys, this is Zombie Tech LP again, and today I will be showing you guys how to edit your videos and compress them and whatnot so that they can be used on YouTube easily and not take up 10, 25 gigabytes on your computer. So, last um, part of the tutorial, we talked about how to use MSI Afterburner to capture video. Now, you're going to need a program called Virtual Dub and you don't actually need this but this is the way I do it and this is my editing program this is not one I made but this is what I use this is the program that I use to edit my videos there are many out there but this one's free um, and a lot of us don't have a thousand dollars to spend on a program so um, this is the download page it's virtualdub.sourceforge.net it will be in the description and you can click on your system's version. Um, I have a 64-bit, but I use this just because I tend to like 32-bit stuff. It doesn't have problems. Like, some of the 64-bit stuff runs into errors because other programs it uses is 32-bit only or something like that. I just use this because I can. And it's going to give you, I believe, a zip file with all virtual dubs files in it. It's not going to give you an installer or anything, but you could put that in whatever you folder you want. I put it in a folder of a program files folder and made it link to it on my desktop, a uh, shortcut. So that's kind of your personal preference to where you install it. I'm not going to go through that in this video, but once you've got that installed, you can go ahead and open it up. And as you can see, this is virtual dub right here. And that's it. So this is where you would open your video files and stuff, but you would need to compress the videos so they don't take up so much space. Now, you see these guys, pretend you don't see this last one. And you see these guys, and you're like, oh, what do I do with them? And you don't do anything with those, because, and those just suck. Just period. All these, except for this one right here, suck. Because I, I installed this one, and on the other one, I installed the last one. But I'm going to be showing you how to install those right now. And so I'm going to close Virtual Dub. And I'm going to download this codec right here. This is called the X264 VFW. VFW stands for Video for Windows. And this is your Windows version of the H.264 codec, which is basically the best one out there. And you'll download this, and it's an EXE file. So you don't have to bother with it. It will run through an installer. All you gotta do is click next a couple times and you're finished. Period. So that is an easy one. This will be in the description. And the other thing you're gonna need is the audio codec. And that can be found at this link, rarewares.org slash the codec name, which happens to be lame MP3 ACM. And this one is a very tricky thing to install. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna download that. And I'm going to open my downloads folder. Um, okay, so I'm in my downloads folder, and you'll get this folder, this file right here, or something very similar to it. And you're just going to extract this like we did in the last video with your program of choice. And you'll get this file right here, something like this. And it'll be in a folder. Now with this folder, you can see that it has four files. One of them is a text file, which if we're going to open this, it will give you instructions for a 64-bit installation. Now, I hate installing this on 64-bit computers because it sucks. But you're going to have to open your command prompt by typing CMD in this. And if you're not the administrator, all you have to do what it says here. But I'm the administrator, so easy enough. And you're going to actually have to go do all this kind of stuff. And it's just crazy. I don't like doing it, but this is what you're going to have to do for the best codec out there. And so you're going to do percent windire direct backslash syswow64. Uh, and caps don't matter. You can type it all lowercase and it will go where you want to go. But now you have to type in this long thing. And depending on where your folder is, I'm not. I'm going to not going to do this part because as you can see I mean this is a long URL or a long file URL with a long folder name and I don't feel like doing it but 
you're just going to do exactly what it says here. You're going to type this in in your CMD. And this right here is re you replace this with wherever your folder is that you extracted. And that's how you install your codecs. So once you have your codecs installed, you can open WinRAR back up. Or not WinRAR, I'm sorry, Virtual Dub. I don't know why I said WinRAR. But I've got two test things made. Um, two test little videos, short clips. And I'm going to show you how to edit those. So if you look right here, um, these right here are my test videos I have recorded. And I'm actually going to put them in their own little folder right now. Um, right here. And so, th these are the tests I recorded. Now, this is the first one. This is the first part. And this is the second part. Now, in Virtual Dub, you would go to File, Open Video File, and you would go find it. And mine is in right here. So, I'm going to open the first one. And you can see it comes up. Now, how would I somehow attach the second file? Because if, if I were to go right here and go open video file, it would open the other one and get rid of this one right now. So we want them both at the same time, one after the other, so they connect. So we're going to go to file, append, avi, segment, and then you would select your other one. Now, if I get an error right here, I will show you what to do, but I have been getting errors here, and I have found the workaround. I did not get an error here, thank goodness, but sometimes you'll get um, a separate, like an error regarding a separate number of streams, and what you're going to have to do is instead of using the, epin, the append AVI segment right now, you're going to have to compress each individual clip and then append them at the end and just set these the way that would work, but it's just a workaround that you don't always have to do. Now to set our compression levels. So for video, you're going to click on your video compression and you're going to select this codec right here that you should have just installed, you can see um, right here. And if I were to go to configure, you would get all this crazy stuff, and this stuff you don't really have to mess with unless you're gonna be unless you're going crazy. Because if you're gonna do like extremely high customization stuff that no one should have to do, I don't think, then you would use this. Because virtual enough has other stuff for all this. So I just leave it defaults. That is the default that I just showed you. And so you select that. And so now that's set as my video codec or codec. And then I need to set my audio. Now with audio, it tries to just say, what audio did I get? I want to save it just like that. It doesn't try to compress it. It doesn't try to do anything to it. So you have to change this to full processing mode as opposed to direct stream. Then you can use compression. And you're going to choose. I, I would. But uh, if you don't have this codec installed, use yours of choice. However, this, I believe, is the best codec out there. Lame MP3 ACM. And I typically choose the highest setting. I, I choose this setting right here at the very top because I can. And so that's how you use your compressions. There are certain plugins you can get for things called filters, and you can add filters. So, like, let's say your video doesn't have because you're using I'm using MSI Afterburner it automatically downsizes or upsizes or upscales or downscales to 720p but if it didn't I believe that the name of the filter for that is um where is it I believe it's resize and you would use that to make up 720p and it would stretch it a little bit and brightness and contrast that will change your brightness and contrast on your video so if you're in, like playing a game and you're somewhere dark and you want your viewers to be able to see easier, then you'd use this and increase the contrast and brightness a little bit. And that's how you use filters. But with this, if I were to say, I'm going to play this right now. Let's say I wanted to cut out where I said 3. Now, what I would do is I would go find exactly where I started saying 3 and I would press the home key on my keyboard which basically starts the beginning marker in virtual dub I messed that up really badly I pressed the wrong key and everything <laughs> so that was horrible
I'm going to try this again. So I pressed it right there. And I have the end key at the very end of where I said 3, as you can see. And all I have to do is press delete, and this should work. If I come towards the beginning. And so that would be how you remove stuff. If you accidentally did something wrong, you can press Control and Z at the same time. That means undo. Um, I believe you can go to edit, undo as well. Um, and that is, and you can also redo. But that's the basics of how you would edit within Virtual Dub. The only thing left is would be actually doing the stuff, so like compressing it. And all you gotta do is click File, Save as AVI, and name what you want. Demo, finalized. I'll name it this. And this is actually in. I have my folder set up so that I have got work in progress, finalized, and archives. I actually have this same setup copied on an external hard drive, but um, so I would go and I would put this in finalized because this is now a finalized video by these standards, and I can just click save, and it's going to go do this. A lot of times, this will take like a lot of time. Now you can ignore this message that comes up here sometimes. Um, it didn't show up for me. Uh, yes, it did. Never mind. You can ignore you can ignore this, or you can do what it says. Either way it works, but um, that's mainly it for compressing your videos. If you look, I can close Virtual Dub now. If I go find that that video I just made under finalized, I believe you can see that we've got it right here. Demo finalized, and it looks all viewable and everything. And I believe I can play this now. Let's try that again, even. So now, if your sound seems offset, it probably is, and you have to do something really crazy to fix that. And I'm not going to go into that. That's something you're going to have to play around with yourself. But those are the basics. I'm not sure why your sound will get offset a lot of the time, but mine does. And I have to do some crazy stuff with it. But I don't have time for that in this short tutorial. So I will see you guys next time. Um, but until then, goodbye.